What a friend we have in Jesus. Amayedu uh, Ndiye Jeso. Um, good morning and welcome to Lee Central um, uh, prayer meeting. Um, this morning we just want to appreciate we got a new uh, a visitor with, amongst us. Uh, we got Tatenda Nongera Mondiwa. Um, where are you? Uh, Tatenda, that's Tatenda. Uh, that's Jeff's uh, daughter. Um, so you'll find out there'll be a few more Zimbabweans coming to the UK um, in, the, in, the, in the next few days as well. But we are grateful that we are here, uh, gathered here this morning uh, to seek God's gift of salvation. And it is through the Lord Jesus Christ that we can be saved. And this offer is available to everybody who is in here. I, I've seen a lot of conversations going on and I need to extend that uh, welcome to each one of you. If you can just reach out to somebody and say hello and welcome, please. <clears throat> It is important that we, we, we welcome each other and we embrace each other and we keep the conversations going. This morning I've got only two uh, announcements. The, the, the first one is that uh, the next come together and chat is on Friday the 28th of April. Um, and this is at Lang Lanes. It's not... Right, so for... Is the dead seal okay, yeah? For further details, please... Uh, Right, and uh, also we have received a special card. Yeah, oh, this is beautiful. For those who can read, like me, uh, I'll, 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 I'll put it on the, on the, on the notice board. Uh, this is from Kath and Paul. Do you remember those two? Yeah? So they haven't forgotten us as yet. So thank you very much for coming. i hand over to my officers. Good morning. It's good to see you as we come together for worship this morning in this post-Easter time. And we commence by turning, if using song books, to song 279. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. This song has been going around the house this week, but not to this tune. It's been going around to the songs to tune. Both Emily, uh, Emily, Thomas and Nicola have been singing it constantly this last week. But we're going to use it to the traditional uh, tune and let's stand to sing and we'll sing the three verses straight through. <laughs> Thank you. 
seated. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. We come in his name. And for our first scripture reading, and to lead us into a time of prayer this morning, I want to go back just over a week to the night of Jesus' arrest, to John chapter 17, and the prayer that he makes, that wonderful prayer, just the last section of it. Because this is him praying for us. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one, Father. Just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them glory that you gave me. And they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity. To let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. And to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you. I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and will continue to make you known, in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. Amen. And we'll look at some of those words a little bit later on in our worship this morning. Well, he starts off that word, those words, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray, pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. And like I said, that's us. Because he's talking to the disciples, he's talking about the disciples, and those who believe in, this, his, in him because of their message, it's us. We are the descendants of that. And so that's why we can sing, My Jesus my saviour lord there is none like you it's 264 in our song books if you're using song books all of my days i want to praise the wonders of your lo- mighty love my comfort my shelter tower of refuge and strength let every breath all that i am never cease to worship you That's how we come this morning. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Because we come to him. We'll sing these words too before we share in prayer together.
for Jesus because it is only through Jesus that we can come and approach you we thank you that you gave the disciples that message because without it we wouldn't be here today we wouldn't have that relationship with you Father help us always to acknowledge that in our own lives but also as the disciples pass on that message it's our charge, it's our responsibility to do this so that we may see others coming into your kingdom. Father, Father, we would pray for all those who can't be with us this morning. You know where they are. You know what they're doing right now. And we just ask that you'll be with them as you are with us. And so, Father, we would just leave our worship this morning in your hands and ask you to take it as the it's the least that we can give back to you because of the fact that you have done so much for us. So Father, continue to be with us both now and in these days that lie ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you to the worship band for leading us in those moments together. And now we're going to listen to the ministry that the band has for us this morning.
What a powerful and mighty God we love and serve. Thank you to the band for that beautiful message this morning. We're going to receive your offering now and as we sing together. Um, you have songbooks, it's number 238. Beautiful Saviour, wonderful counsellor, clothed in majesty, Lord of history. You're the way, the truth, the life, star of the morning, glorious in holiness. You're the risen one, heaven's champion, and you reign, you reign over all. Let's stand as we sing. There are three verses and choruses, and as we do so, um, if you are able this morning, let's give in our offering together. Thank you. to scripture once again and again from the gospel according to John and from verse 20 from verse sorry from chapter 20 from verse 19 Jesus appearing to the disciples and then particularly to Thomas on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen before Michael shares some thoughts on those readings this morning. We're going to listen as the songsters minister to us just now. Thank you to the songsters for that beautiful message this morning. 
I always think the week after Easter is one of those awkward ones um, for someone uh, like me who has to lead worship and prepare for it. Um, because it can feel a bit like a letdown, can't it? We've had the glory and significance of the Easter weekend, and we've yet to experience the full majesty and life changing coming of the Holy Spirit. But what about here and now? What about this time in between? Where do we go? Well, the thing is, we, we have an obvious answer, well, at least for today, and that is to look at Thomas. Not that one. <laughs> Get your hair cut. <laughs> the disciple who I think it's fair to say has the hardest time after Judas. But to me, that's a misrepresentation of what he is, who he is, and what he does. Now, other than being a name on the list of the disciples, he's only really mentioned in the fourth gospel. And even then, only three times. First could be perceived as being completely out of character, as it shows his total commitment to Jesus. John chapter 11, when they've heard about Lazarus, the death of Lazarus, and in order to reach him, they have to go through Judea, where Jesus has previously been threatened, he says that they should go, so that if it comes to it, they may also die with him. So there's no doubt he was committed. But there were times also when he didn't understand. John 14, for instance, at the Last Supper, it was he who, when Jesus was being quite confusing, talking about the fact that he was going away and coming back, all he did was ask the question, that the others wanted to know the answer. How do we know where you're going because we don't know the way? Jesus, of course, replied, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So that brings us to this final incident. The one for which he is best known the one for which he gets the epithet Doubting Thomas, which in my opinion is slightly undeserved. It's a story we know well, isn't it? Although we don't know all the circumstances around it. We don't know, for instance, why he wasn't present in the upper room on the evening of the resurrection when Jesus first made his first appearance to the group. We don't know if Jesus knew he wasn't there. Those things are a bit of a mystery. But of course, it's what happened a week later that we really want to focus our thoughts on today. And when you think about it, I don't think Thomas was really that out of order for simply wanting what the rest of the group had already received physical evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. Why couldn't he? All the others had had that a week earlier, and you can imagine some of the conversations that went on during that week, can't you? Why don't you believe us? I simply want to see with my own eyes. Is that so wrong? But we're telling you the truth. But you all saw before you believed. Why can't I have that same level of proof? Because there's only one recorded incident of a disciple believing without seeing, and that's the, the disciple who Jesus loved at the tomb in John chapter 20, where he says he looked, went into the tomb, he saw, and he believed. The rest, there's no, um, there's no argument. They didn't have that. They didn't necessarily believe. And so you can see the frustration, can't you, on both sides of the argument. But then it's what comes next that is the hugely significant part. And it's not a surprise that Jesus came again. But in the context of what we think about Thomas, or what's commonly thought about Thomas, 
His response may be seen as a surprise. After all, he said, I, I, unless, I will not believe unless I put my, see his hands, put my finger in the hands, put my hand in his side. And when Jesus offered him the invitation to do that, he didn't. As I'm sure if we'd have been in the same situation, we wouldn't have either. All he needed to do was see. But when he saw, when he had that physical proof, he came out with perhaps the most important statement that we find about the nature of Jesus. If you look at it in theological terms, it's a subject called Christology, where we talk about the person and nature of Jesus as the Christ. John is considered to have some of the highest Christology in the whole of the New Testament. And this is possibly the highest statement in that highest Christology. When he says, my Lord and my God. Nowhere else is Jesus openly referred to as God. Nowhere else is he given that title by somebody else. Only here. And it's the ultimate. And if we read a couple of verses later, we see why that is so important in the context of this book. Verse 31. A verse universally accepted as being at the end of at least one draft of the gospel. Because it sets out the stated aim of the evangelist. But these things are written. That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and that by believing you may have life in his name. Jesus had previously told Thomas that he was the life. Thomas had concluded after the resurrection with the physical proof that Jesus was God. And the reader including us here in the 20, 21st century, is asked to believe. Those seven signs, there are only seven miracles in John's Gospel, those seven signs all point the way and all lead to the conclusion that Jesus is this person, Jesus is God, and that by believing we may have life in his name. And that's what Je makes Jesus' other comment to Thomas so significant. Because he talks about those who have believed yet have not seen. And that's he's talking about the people who will believe on the testimony of the apostles. That's why we share those readings from John 17. And while he's technically saying that Thomas should be first of that group, really he is talking about those who are to come. And that's a theme we recently explored in the final session of the Bible study that we had before Easter. Because it comes across very clearly in that final section of the prayer that we read earlier. That Jesus makes, that Jesus makes in the presence of his disciples. This fascinating window on the relationship between Jesus and his Father that is split into three sections. Where Jesus prays for himself, Jesus prays for his disciples... And finally, as we heard earlier, praise for those who will believe in me through their message. And that just doesn't mean just those who heard the disciples, the apostles. That means you, it means me. So what's our response to be? Like I said before, and will no doubt say again, it's a question that each of us can only answer for ourselves. And to a certain extent, I would imagine that you have come to some kind of conclusion in that already, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But maybe, this morning, even after we've just been through Easter, it may be that you need to meet with me be like Thomas once again and look on the nail marks and look on this 
mark the, the side of Jesus and say, my Lord and my God. Maybe you need to say, maybe I need to say, that by believing I may have life in his name. Where do we stand? Where do we stand on that spectrum? As we consider that, I'd like us to turn, using so much, to song number 280. It's um, a song, really, that was written for, for songsters a few years back, based on another part of, of Scripture, uh, from Mark chapter 8, verses 27-29. But it says asking the question, when you ask the simple question, or when it's Jesus asking the question of us, who do men say I am? Can we answer truthfully and honestly in the chorus, as Thomas did, you're my Lord, my Christ, my Lord and my God. To you my life is sacrificed, you're my focus, your direction, the meaning of my life, my Lord and Christ. I hope it's a song that enough of us are familiar with to be able to sing this morning, but it's because it's a beautiful song and acknowledges some beautiful truths, some amazing truths. So as we sing, make sure you can make that statement. You're my Lord, my Christ. We'll sing the two verses through, please. together 
Father God, we come before you this morning and we want to say, as we just sung, we want to say with Thomas that Jesus is my Lord and my God. Help us in everything that we do to acknowledge that. We've just sung about that change in our lives when we come to the cross, when we come to the risen tomb, to the empty tomb, when, folk come, when we come and see the risen Jesus. And let that be such a reality in our life. Let that be such a life-changing moment for each and every one of us. Help us, Father, to always acknowledge that in our lives. Father, we come before you. We want to acknowledge that change you've already made, but we want to also leave ourselves open to you to make further changes in our life as you need to happen so that we can be the people that you need us to be. So, Father, do that now and in these days that lie ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And in closing, he's using song that's going to turn to song number 276. I know we had this song to conclude last Sunday, but when we read, Lo, Jesus meets thee risen from the tomb, scatters, lovingly he greets thee, scatters fear, and gloom as we do in the second verse we have to acknowledge that once again so let's stand give me a second i'm going to go and play and we'll sing the three verses straight through please Lord, as we leave this place, may your love, your presence, 
and your strength and power go with us. May you guide us to be your people within our world today. Lord, may you protect us and keep us safe until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>